It's time for Recipe of the Day. Whatever it is you're making for your Sunday dinner, whether it's a juicy steak or a roast, whether there's mashed potatoes involved or crusty bread, it is going to taste better if you have garlic butter in there somewhere. And so I am telling you today how to make the best ever garlic butter. Now, you might be thinking garlic butter is just garlic butter. How could it be the best ever? But something changed for me a little while ago, and now I make better garlic butter than I ever have before. And so I want to share that with you. There are two three important things about this garlic butter recipe. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing I discovered by accident, I was making some garlic butter. I'd taken my butter out of the fridge to soften, and then when I went to make it, all of my cutting boards were dirty, and I was feeling lazy. And so I just got out my food processor, and I was like, huh, and now I don't even have to chop the garlic. I will just do it in here. So I did the garlic butter in the food processor, softened butter, garlic, and salt. That's all that went into it that time. And I like pulverized it in there, and I'm telling you, it was it was so good. It was so creamy, kind of whipped. And the most important thing was that it really pulverizes the garlic. It makes it part of the butter. So then when you spread it on hot toast or anything, you don't end up with those little clumps of garlic coming out. It is all seeping into everything. You see what I mean? So that garlic flavor is going right down into every bit of the bread. Every little bit where the butter melts has that garlic flavor. It's really, really amazing, really intense. So that is one of my favorite things now is to absolutely make the garlic butter in the food processor. I will say if your food processor or your sturdy blender that you're using for this isn't powerful enough to do that garlic, to take a whole clove of garlic and really mince it up like that, then you can chop it up first. Chop it up first and then you're giving your food processor a head start and then you put the chopped garlic in there and then it's going to do that whole pulverizing, making it into one with the butter. That's going to happen. Okay, so use your food processor. It is the lazier way to make it and actually turns out better. That is the first tip for the best garlic butter. The second tip for the best garlic butter is to use some shallot or onion in there too. So I was seeing some recipes online at one point that had shallot in their garlic butter and I was like, eh, why would that make a difference? But then it occurred to me, shallot and garlic go together so well, but also onion and garlic go together so well. And I even just looked this up. One of my favorite books for recipe development is the Flavor Bible. It is a book that is organized by ingredient. And when you look up the ingredient, it then tells you all the other ingredients that go with it. It's really great when you're trying to think of something new to pair with something. I love this book. I will put a link to the Flavor Bible in the show notes for you. But I looked it up in there and sure enough, garlic has onion listed in bold, meaning they're a very good pairing. And onion has garlic listed in bold. These things just bring out more in each other. And so a little bit of onion in there is going to make a difference. Now, I only do this if I'm using the food processor because I do not want clumps of minced garlic in my mixture. So you put your softened butter into the food processor along with the garlic and some onion And then the third thing is fresh flat leaf parsley, not the curly parsley. Flat leaf parsley has much better flavor. Some parsley goes in there. It's going to get whipped right up in there. It's kind of going to tint the garlic butter a tiny bit towards green, not very much, and it's going to have some little flecks of it. But you know, we so often think of parsley as like a garnish that we forget how delicious it is and how much fresh flavor it brings. So you have that butter with the kind of heavy, intense, and potent flavors of the onion and garlic, and you put a little bit of flat leaf parsley in there and the whole thing just becomes bright and fresh. It makes the hugest difference. Similar to what I said about the onion though, I wouldn't add the parsley if I was chopping these ingredients by hand. I think it has a tendency to kind of end up like too much in your mouth at a time, caught in your teeth, all of those kinds of things. So only if you're using the food processor. You know, I'm looking at the recipe on Cook the Story for the garlic butter right now and it has pictures of the food processor that I use, which made me realize that I should put a link to that in the show notes for you because it's just this small, little food processor. It's a Ninja brand. One of the ones that comes in a set of one or two or three different sizes, but then the motor fits on top and fits on all of them. I love it for this kind of thing because it's just the small right size. I use it for hummus. Anything that I'm making kind of that amount of, so I'm not dirtying a whole big thing and it just fits in there and it's really powerful. Like those, it has like three blades running around in it and it really cuts things up so good. So I'll put a link into the show notes for that for you. And then I'm going to say I have one more garlic butter tip. So I said, use the food processor, not just because it's easier and the lazy way to do it, but because it 
actually makes a difference to the flavor and the texture. I said add onion or shallot, and I said fresh parsley. I'm also going to say to salt your garlic butter. I typically buy unsalted butter for this, and then I salt it to taste, and I have control over it. But even if you buy salted butter, taste it. It should taste good. And if it doesn't have that nice, oh my God, I want to spread this on bread salty flavor to it, add more salt. So those are my tips for the best ever garlic butter. I'll put the link to the recipe in the show notes, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there. Or you can check me out on Instagram. I am Cook the Story on Instagram, and I know that I've shared this recently, so it's going to be in the feed right there, and you'll get to the link from the link in my bio, link at Cook the Story on Instagram. Okay, I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all-new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. Thank you.